Uh, next, we have Pertti Itkonen. He is a development manager from Metsähallitus, and he will be speaking via the net stream about carrying capacity of recreational forest areas in changing conditions. Pertti, the floor is yours, and hopefully we will um, get by with less hassle. Okay, so I have a very a large topic carrying capacity in recreational forest areas in changing conditions uh, and and uh, i think uh, it, it's too large for a 15 minutes presentation so i will i will focus on on uh, on uh, small areas national parks and and uh, also uh, focus on on covid 19 and and the changes it has made in in the, especially in, in tourism in in uh, protected areas and also also something about the climate change uh, what, what it means what we can, how how what, how we can see see the influence uh, now and in the future so uh, i i think you all know something about metsahallitus the manager of land and waters uh, owned by the state in Finland, and uh, it is these uh, land and waters are divided uh, about half and half. Or half is is made is uh, used for for forestry and uh, real estate business, and uh, and the half of of the area is is uh, protected areas. So we have uh, we have both, both business and public uh, services in included. Uh, but these both have, have they have a separated uh, budget and and uh, and uh, also the land land is divided between these two two main main sectors and this uh, public sector parks and wildlife is is uh, financed by the state budget so we are not divide uh, depending on the income that comes from selling wood and and, uh, and other goods uh, and I'm working in, in a parks and wildlife Finland. I've been uh, employed from 1988, so so 30 years now in at least I think eight different uh, tasks from from nature protection to to recreational services and and uh, and project management and at the mo moment i'm a development manager in lapland unit of parks and wildlife uh, i think we don't need to need to go through this in details so so uh, the backbone of of, of parks and wildlife are national parks where we have now 40 of them and uh, and the next one will be established uh, or, during this year in in Salla here in Lapland, and as you see, the national parks are quite evenly distributed over the over the country. But uh, but Bertie, there's a big I'm, I'm sorry, you have to yeah. click. You have to click on the. We only see now the first uh, slide. So if you just uh, go and click. Where are you? Where do I click? Uh, on the slide, where, what you want to show? I I I've done so. Sorry. <laughs> oh yeah. Your screen, your screen share, sharing is paused here. It, it says, so I like to resume share. No, nothing happens. We only see the first slide. What happens if jos menee tonne näytöt tuossa oikealla kun on se näyt ja siinä alla lukee niin siinä saattaisi onnistua se primäärinen Vaihto. Siinä on kaksi vaihtoehtoa. Toinen no, sanoo, no, että no. ensisijainen näyttö Ei mulla ja kaksi. sitten no. automaattinen. Mulla tietenkin, kun mulla on tuo... No. Siis ootapas missä. missä? So it's time for stretching. <laughs> Semmoinen. I think so. <laughs> kun menee pois sitä esitysnäystä, niin sitten sieltä... Does it, auttaako se yhtään, jos sen laittaa niin pois ja koittaa vaikka avata uudestaan se esitys? Uh, 
ratkaisinkohan minä tämän koko systeemin vai, vai tuota... No niin, nyt minä näen teidät siellä. Mitä te näette? Tässä vaan lukee, että... I can see you, 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 you there, but what you can see. We can see Pertti Itkonen metsähallitus text, nothing else. Okay, I'll try to share this once again. Uh, no, okay, now I'm trying to share my screen again. Can you see something? We can see all your files, so keep the ones okay. that... <laughs> okay, now, now... The PowerPoint is starting, you can, yes. You, know, you can see something. Yes. Can you see my presentation now? Yes. Now maybe you can try the... Yes, and I, I try to present you to the network of our, our uh, national yes. parks here in the map. Maybe now you can try the whole sc the screen. Okay. I think that it needs to still go to the... Sinne, anteeksi, kun mä sanon sitä, diaesitykseen ja siellä se, mikä, jos sinne menee sinne yläosan diaesitykseen. Näettekö nyt, nyt tämän koko... Nyt näkyy niin esittäjän näkymä, eli ensimmäinen ja seuraava. Ja minä näen täällä taas ensimmäisen dian koko näytöllä. Me nähdään, mitä sun pitäisi ja sä näet, mitä meidän pitäisi. <laughs> Klikkaa vaan siitä nelos, nelosesta. Ja... Nyt... Okay. presentation box in the lower bar. Oh, uh, so what what you can see now? Now we can see the parks and wildlife Finland. Okay, yes, yes, you at least you are now in. The, we are in the same slide here. Yes. yes. Continue from there. That's that's excellent. Okay, thing. okay. So what I tried to say uh, that, that there is a big difference between uh, southern and northern Finland where. We have the large uh, national parks and other protected areas in, in northern Finland and in Lapland, especially in southern Finland, all these are quite small. So, so that makes quite a big difference in management of, of uh, these areas. So something about the background, uh, about our uh, outdoor recreation. Uh, uh, Most of the land is owned by private people in Finland, usually families, uh, 30% by the state, mainly in, in Lapland, and 10% by companies and societies, including private companies and, and uh, also municipalities and church. So that's quite a big difference between even compared to, to Sweden or Middle Europe. They also have a lot of public for public forests, but but uh, but uh, they are often owned by by municipalities and, and church. And uh, our protected areas and wilderness areas they cover about uh, the average of 13% percent of, of land area in the whole whole country, and and uh, they, they are concentrated on on northern Finland mainly. But uh, as you know, we have this everyman's rights, so, so it means a free access and, and uh, other rights to use, use nature for recreation uh, and, and livelihood, like reindeer herding. And that means that, that uh, almost all, all these areas, uh, both private, public and protect, even protected areas, they are in, in recreational use to some extent. So there is a lo lot of a lot of supply for for uh, recreational use in, in Finland. Uh, I could say that there's more, more supply than demand. And uh, as you know, the demand of uh, outdoor recreation can be divided into two large parts. So uh, usually we, we divide it to local recreational use made by, by people living in the area or, or nearby And, and then nature tourism uh, that uh, is, is the source can be from Finland or, or abroad. And, and, and the first, first uh, 
uh, but you usually don't use that much money than 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 in in, in if you are tourists and stay stay for several days in the destination. Finland is also very sparsely populated compared to the rest of the Europe, and and that its population is is focused on 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 southern part, and that means that that. Uh, in, in this uh, recreational uh, use, uh, the local recreation it, it dominates the, the areas nearby by large cities, mm-hmm. and and the nature tourism is is more important in remote areas compared to the local local use. And this is a question is uh, important, especially in Lapland, uh, mm-hmm. where it is mainly concentrated on on uh, tourist resorts. But also, also here in remote areas, the local rights uh, of use uh, land for berry picking, fishing, and hunting, and and uh, even uh, even uh, uh, motorized vehicles are are important. So something about the, the background in what we have, how we have handled this or managed this visitor uh, visitors and and and. Uh, Tourist recreation in in uh, Metsähallitus. Uh, that uh, I think it, it, the first clear strategies or, or strategic guidelines were created in in nineties, and and that's when when the attitude towards tourism and recreation in in uh, prote- protected areas changed quite quite a lot. So the, the and the main main driver was was to to have more acceptance and support from from local people to protected areas, and and uh, the tool was to promote uh, tourism in in uh, protected areas. And and uh, what we what we have made since since uh, late nineties was that that we we decided to concentrate the infrastructure and our, our public services in the most attractive areas. And, and uh, these areas should, should be near tourism resorts and, and uh, private services. And in Lapland, that means uh, national parks. We also, also started cooperation with tourism businesses to, to strengthen their brands National parks already have a strong brand as a, as a, a recreational destination all over the world, so it's, it was quite easy work. But we also could see that that uh, that uh, concentration in in uh, chosen areas made uh, management and uh, and control of of the of the visitors more more the easier and more effective. And, and we, we uh, estimated that the negative impact altogether can be reduced by better infrastructure if we have, have uh, these this visitors concentrated on few areas. And uh, we made quite large investments in, in, in uh, recreational in infrastructure in, in, uh, from 90s and 2000s. And and we counted from our visitor data that that uh, we the, the areas the local economy gets uh, about ten times payback for the investment. So so in that sense it was it was also very very good good business. But uh, one one that is often uh, forgotten in, in in that strategy is that the other areas uh, protected areas are left in less intensive use they are they are open and they have free access but but uh, but uh, especially those tourists coming from from uh, abroad and, and southern Finland uh, they usually used to stay stay in these areas where, where they have a good infrastructure for hiking and, and skiing and other activities so the rest of the areas, they, they were left more for nature protection or uh, other land use and, and also locals. So this strategy also meant the division of the areas between, in, in a sense, between locals and, and uh, local use and, and tourists. Uh, to manage this, this, uh, this uh, kind of tourism, we, we 
they developed a standardized visitor counting and, uh, and survey methods based on, on counters and, and uh, questionnaires among uh, tourists. And, and uh, since 2000, I think we have a very uh, we have a very large data gathered from from uh, all, all, all the important recreational areas in Finland. We also developed the general principles of sustainability. So what it means means, and this is what we what we have uh, made for for ourselves in, in management, but also for for those those uh, companies, entrepreneurs working in the in protected areas, and as as a tool for to 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 manage or or, or to. Uh, Set, set the limits to, to, uh, to the impact of, of uh, recreational use. We, we developed, or in fact, we didn't develop, but we took, took uh, uh, the lim limits of accept acceptable change in, in use in all, all important areas. Yeah, and and uh, he, here we we decided not to use this carrying capacity, which means which means that we should be able to predefine the, the maximum number of, of visitors in in area or other quantities beforehand, and and uh, for more, many reasons this this is not 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 uh, possible. Uh, I think you you are familiar with this this uh, process of of uh, limits of acceptable change in uh, how it's used in in, in metabolism. It starts from desired future conditions, uh, then then uh, development of indicators and and uh, methods of measuring and ends in, in a management actions when, when these limits of acceptable change that we measure using these indicators is, is uh, reached. And of course, you can, you can, you can uh, quite easily find the, find the critical factors here, here, which are the indicators. So how to find the right indicators uh, that are in correlation of the, of, of the real impacts of of, uh, on nature, and also also uh, the the limits that have have to be set by by managers. So in finally, this is is can is a quite uh, subjective decision. And and uh, today we can see that we still have have uh, problems with with within th these two two factors here, especially finding finding good indicators. But we are working with that. So, what has happened since since two thousand? Uh, in that sense, it was very effective that number of visits has been increasing for over twenty years now, and and, and this this uh, increase has been very 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 uh, big. It's uh, started from. Uh, a little over one million visits per year in in uh, all national parks, and uh, now it's it's uh, in about uh, four million, and it seems that this this uh, increase will continue. Uh, at the same time, the uh, national parks has been uh, become very attractive in in uh, as as a destinations in, in, in that sense that, that we, we have a, got a lot of lot more initiatives from local local uh, uh, politicians for new, new uh, national parks. I think at the moment there are something like five or five, uh, five or ten uh, initiatives for new, new national parks. But but the but the area and number of national parks has has been growing very slowly and from I think to about thirty to forty in twenty years, so much less than the number of visits in in a, these areas, 
and especially during these last two years within this COVID pandemics. So there has been, been a jump up, so about 20% per year. And th this is what we, we couldn't expect. Here, here are some numbers from, from uh, 2020. To 20 uh, uh, in in a national parks in Lapland and and you, as you can see this is these are not equal so so there are some areas where the number of visits has reduced but but the average is uh, was was eight uh, percent in in uh, 2000 from from 2019 and uh, the highest uh, Increase has been in Riisituntuuri National Park in in uh, Posio, but also 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 in in uh, in Oulanka National Parks. The, the most visited park, Pallas Yllästunturi, didn't uh, the number didn't rise at at all. But I think this year the the uh, increase has continued. Uh, what makes this this uh, problematic is is that that uh, when we have an analyzed our data from from uh, nature nature natural values and and compare that to to data from receipts, so we can clearly see see that that uh, biodiversity attracts tourism, and and that that uh, takes place in 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 all levels, so, so in landscape level. And uh, at the habitat level, and even even in special species le level. Now, this this study was made made by Pirkko Siga. Uh, sorry, from uh, from Metsähallitus in Eastern Finland. So 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 uh, when when there's a, there's a big raise in numbers of visits so so that the, the destinations has been has been the most most impo important protected valuable protected areas and even inside them they they used to go there where where we have the highest values so that's that's a not not a, a equation that is easy to solve So what 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 happened during these two year, years when there was a, a, a rush of of new new uh, visitors in in uh, national parks and other other popular protected uh, and recreational areas? So there was a clear uh, overcrowding of of on trails and campsites, especially on on uh, like uh, on national parks near Helsinki. There were a lot of new user groups that, that were clearly not uh, familiar with with uh, our outdoor etiquette or, or or regulation or tradition. Uh, there was a congestion in in uh, in uh, traffic and parking place, and and uh, also wild parking, uh, and that's what it, that's that's was especially concerned to the areas near, near Helsinki, Nuuksio and, and Sipoonkorpi National Parks. And of course this is not, this, this was a quite periodic, periodical, so in, during the high, highest season, the highest season was, was in, in the, was the vacation during the vacation of people in, in uh, July, but also August. In Lapland, we have seen um, conf confrontation between, between tourist, growing tourism and, and a traditional livelihood and, and uh, local recreation. So there are more tourists in areas where, where local people use to fish and hunt and, and or, or, or hike, where they know that there has been not that much tourist tourist uh, like uh, late September October or or, or a, a remote areas like wilderness areas. There has been more tourists. I can say that there have been more tourists everywhere. 
And when you get more people uh, hiking or, or biking in, in nature, that, that means increased erosion and, and disturbance for nature. So, so it is a COVID rush caused uh, problems for ecological and social sustainability. Uh, at the same time, this, this, it, it uh, changed the, the structure of tourism. When there was a lockdown, so, so the foreign tourists were absent, especially in, in the early 20s, uh, 2020, when there were hardly any, any foreign tourists in Lapland. But quite soon, soon this was compensated by, by domestic to increase in domestic tourism. But, but uh, domestic tourists come, come in, in, in uh, July, August, and, and then, then in win winter, uh, maybe later than, than foreign tourists. So, so uh, there were big changes in tourism seasons. And al also, also the consumption uh, structure of, of domestic tourists is, is uh, quite different of that uh, from of, of foreign tourists. And especially this concerns uh, buying a, a guided services like, like dog sledging or, or, or even uh, uh, snow scooter driving, uh, reindeer sledges, etc. Uh, so Finnish tourists used to used to hike on their own. Maybe, of course, they need need, uh, need hotels and cabins, and and uh, they buy food and food and beverages, etc. It's the sa same, but but uh, anyhow, there was a quite a big crisis in in, in tourism in Lapland, and of course that caused uh, problems in in uh, economic sustainability in. Uh, in the tourist resorts. And uh, one big change that was not uh, caused by the COVID, but uh, simultaneously, so mountain bikes became extremely popular. And, and uh, that, was, that was boosted by, by electricity. So, so I think during this last summer, there were almost half of the uh, tourists uh, in, in uh, Trails of Saaris, uh, Uro Gekkonen National Park or, or Pallas Ylös Park, Park, they were, were uh, bikers. So it was a re real breakthrough that we have been waiting for for 20 years, I think. Okay, that, that, that was a kind of sudden change. In just two years, there, there was a quite big change in, in the visiting uh, national parks more people, different kind of people and different kind of activities. And we, we, we were, I think we could handle that quite well, but, but uh, it was quite clear that we, could, we, we were not uh, prepared for that. But, but I can say that, that, that no one was prepared in our societies for the, such, such a pandemic. The other change that that is going on behind this is a climate change and say i already told quite a lot about that that mitigation and adaptation and uh, we know that it's it's strengthening towards north and and uh, it is it is uh, arctic areas are most vulnerable uh, and as say said uh, this uh, I, I, all right. I think this this uh, what we have to do to, to, uh, to prevent that to pre or prevent this this negative impact is uh, there are mitigation measures that should be done in national level mainly and 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 the uh, local level the adaptation measures are left and uh, at, at least on on short period. Uh, even the, the climate change is quite quite slow change and gives some time time for for adaptation. It includes risks for landscape level changes or even disasters like large storms 
wildfires and uh, insect damages. And they have increased uh, all over the uh, northern, northern hemisphere. Uh, we have seen some signs in Finland during the last two years, but, but uh, maybe not that much, but, but uh, the risk is there be behind. And th 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 that is a, a sudden change that we, we have to be prepared for. Uh, say I already told about the change, changes in seasons, both in nature and, and, uh, uh, and tourism, partly caused by, by dynamics in tourism and partly by the, by the environment. And I say already already told about this this uh, needs to to reduce emissions, but where, where the transport uh, is of, of tourists is is the most uh, the biggest problem and question. Uh, what can be we can be sure about is that the global global interest to our Arctic will in, increase anyhow. So, so there is a there is a demand for for, for tourism in Arctic in, in behind. So what what's what's next? Uh, as I said, so we we were not very well prepared for sudden changes. But I think what we have to learn is that that there will be such such sudden changes in the future too. And they can be caused by, by new pandemics or natural catastrophes caused by climate change, but also, also in, in, in tourism itself. So it's quite dynamic in, and, and we, we have to be dynamic in, in management too. Uh, These limits of accept, acceptable change are, are clearly closing. So, so I think it's a uh, time for, to renew, renew our strategy. And, and what what we need in, in this this future strategy is, is a, what what we are already doing here here is a, is a more efficient guiding and information to reduce these negative impacts and and one question is to re reach those new new groups of visitors usually they are they are, they are serving each other in in a social network. Where, where we don't have any access so so that's for where we have to develop our our information work at the moment we have this outdoor etiquette campaign uh, going on where, where we want want to uh, to guide these new groups how to behave in in in, the, in nature well, what is clearly needed is to update uh, data including position what we don't have at the moment we have have as i told we have this this uh, uh, standardized system of of uh, uh, surveys and and counting but uh, we have seen that that that's that's not sensitive enough to to react to this this kind of sudden changes in in in, uh, in uh, visitors and also, also better uh, indicators to 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 monitor the, their impact on nature. O also, what we need is is a, is a more supervision of tourism in protected areas, and, and that means that we must have have staff out there to guide and 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 supervise the use of of, of nature. Uh, what we have to think is is, is that uh, that when we have concentrated our infrastructure and services in, in national parks, so if we are closing to, to to limits, so should we change this this strategy to to distribute the, the infrastructure and guide people to other areas too? And, and of course, here here we have we have a, it's a, our state forest, multi-purpose forest which already have a objective to serve serve uh, people uh, also in 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 uh, recreation 
And then there are, of course, other recreational areas uh, owned by municipalities and, and church and even even uh, private people. So, so I, I think this is this is where we we have have to make make up some kind of new strategy uh, guidelines. Uh, so that that uh, these, these national parks are not overcrowded and 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 uh, these problems, negative impacts, will be not too too high to to treat uh, natural values. Okay, that was all. I think there were, maybe there were more questions and answers, but but uh, I'm I'm happy if I can hear some good advice from from, from you. Thank you, Perti. Any questions? And thanks for the tech team to adapting this <laughs> to this situation. Yeah, it has been very challenging. Maybe everything has gone wrong, wrong already, so it's only positive steps. But Seiya has a question, please. About this use of limits of acceptable change, you were, you were saying that maybe you you get rid of that because that is very difficult when it's not acceptable. What do you do? I mean, will there be some restrictions, for example, or some kind of restricting the amount of tourists in some, some areas or some payments or something? Yes, I, I hope I could hear you. Uh, there's some echo in, in, in the space there, but, but uh, you talked about this, this uh, actions or measures to respond for the, the use that, that uh, 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 reaches the limits of acceptable change. They should be planned beforehand, and 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 there should be also proactive management actions. So I mean, I mean, uh, if we can see that that the number of visits is increasing, or there are some ac uh, activities, new activities that that uh, have a ne negative impact on nature. So. So we can limit these these uh, changes beforehand, and I, I think what this is what we have done done by by uh, by constructing the most popular trails in in, in nearby areas for daily users, and and I think so far this has worked quite well. So so we we, we could have managed uh, this this uh, impacts. And, and and steer this this growth of, of visits to to this this uh, constructed uh, trails in in national parks. But but you are but you are right. So 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 we must have a, a other tools too, and and uh, the, this should include at least the, the possibility to make make uh, restrictions in in. Uh, in, in visitors' 